Here's Hector. Clearly he's doing something that shouldn't be allowed. Yet, he continues to get away with it game after game. The reason we keep sending him to Smurf is so that you can learn from his example and carry games like he does. There's no other way to approach climbing. To win, you have to stomp your opponents every game just like Smurfs do. Alright, let's get into it. Here's the matchup that he found himself in with Renekton vs Lucian. To win, he'll be opting for a more passive opener. You don't always have to play aggressively to beat your opponents. It'll be a direct contrast to last week's video where we discussed using Time Warp Tonic and Corrupting Potion to brute force lane control. For top laners who can't run this setup, we recommend the Doran's Shield and Second Wind combination. The reason this is a mission is mostly to get you thinking about your rune choices. A lot of players, especially in lower elos, just run pre-made rune setups for their champions. They do this every game without really thinking of why they're running their specific runes. This is a huge problem in certain matchups, specifically against ranged top laners. A lot of players default to the bone plating rune since it's generally the most effective in the resolve tree, but it does absolutely nothing against champions who can easily play around it. Bone plating is only useful if you take damage after the initial hit. Ranged champions usually look to poke you down with single auto attacks. Bone plating literally gives no value a lot of the time in these situations. Whereas second win is always proccing off every instance of damage. The value of this rune skyrockets because you will be taking very consistent damage throughout the lane. Your second mission is to let your opponent beat themselves. This is doable mostly because of the aforementioned item and rune setup. Believe it or not, playing ranged champions in top lane does take skill. They have to constantly play aggressively while evading ganks, and if they ever miss position in lane against you, you can easily run them over. They're always walking a very fine line between lane dominance and straight up feeding. All you need to do is play safe until you see an opportunity where they've messed up. The crazy sustain you'll have from your setup will make this very easy to do. Not only that, but this defensive setup can literally win you trades by not doing anything at all. Low elo ranged top laners are very bad at managing minion aggro. Every time they auto attack you, they'll take a fair bit of minion damage. Meanwhile, Dorn's shield and second win will heal most of the damage that you took from their auto attack. This is actually a very viable win condition for beating bad players during the laning phase. At least until they build lifesteal or some other form of sustain. Your final mission is nothing revolutionary. Once you have a lead as a melee champion, you should be pushing it as hard as you can. Way too often we see melee players play too safely, even when they have a lead, out of fear of being harassed. Ranged champions are very frail. Once they fall behind, they're incredibly susceptible to literally any all-in. Okay, let's hop into the game and see how this comes together. Early on, Hector is just chilling. There's nothing that he can do with no way to close the gap onto Illusion. Very quickly, we see how low elo players are bad at playing these matchups. Lucian walks up to the bush, so Hector can just sneak out, get some damage, and walk back into safety. Lucian tries it again, but with a ward this time. Obviously, Hector wins because Lucian is deciding to melee range him for no reason. Of course, Hector underestimates Lucian's range and takes quite a bit of damage as Lucian levels up. Okay, question time. The lane is about even, despite Hector's misstep getting him quite low. Lucian chugs his potion, but Hector still hasn't chosen to do so. Do you think he just forgot, or is there a reason he's choosing not to? Here's where you diligent folk who read your items and runes can shine. Both Dorn's Shield and Second Wind regenerate your HP based on missing health. That's clearly why he took so much damage for free here. He's just gaining as much value as he possibly can. Therefore, whenever you run this setup, don't chug your potion unless you absolutely need to. You're just missing free value in the long run by doing that. Lucian, who is playing very aggressively, has opened himself up to a gank, especially since he hasn't warded yet. Hector is just working on clearing minions here to get level 2 so that he can follow this Jarvan up. Lucian dashes in with no vision, and his fate is sealed. Unfortunately, Hector does die in the process. For starters, when a gank is coming in and you're low on health, just use your pot immediately. This was just greed as he didn't think he needed it. Secondly, don't be an arrogant jerk and stand still to pretend that you're cool. This death was entirely unnecessary. Nevertheless, he can just teleport back to lane and initiate a freeze once he respawns. Sure, Lucian got a kill and gold lead, 
but as we've seen from countless other Smurf guides, the experience lead Hector gets by freezing versus players without teleport is usually enough to win in the lane outright because of how much value early levels provide. Once Lucian finally gets back to lane, Hector does look for a small trade. It goes about even despite the minion and item disadvantage, mostly because of his level lead. He does have to give up most of these caster minions, but as we've touched on in a couple of videos, giving up CS, especially the less important casters, is totally fine. There's an all-in about to happen. We're going to let it play out first, and then break down why Hector chose to play it the way that he did. Okay, that was definitely a bit of an unorthodox way to approach that all-in. Instead of stunning immediately, Hector saved it for later. The problem is that champion mastery is very important for understanding when you can actually take fights. A lot about League is knowing exactly how much damage you do and how much damage you can take and avoid. Unfortunately for Hector, we make him smurf for basically every role on the site. Not only that, but he plays multiple different champions to showcase how you can win with different playstyles. We can't expect him to have mastery over every single champion in the game. As a top lane main who plays Renekton, you might be aware that if you E, auto, W, Q, E, auto, Lucian, he dies for certain at this health range. Hector, not knowing the full limits of Renekton, chose to approach things differently. He knew that if he ran away, Lucian might chase after him. Then, he could stun him in his minion wave, essentially guaranteeing the kill because of the extra damage that Lucian took. We're in no way saying this approach was correct, it's just to highlight that you can potentially overcome your lack of champion knowledge by applying general fundamentals that can be used on any character. Okay, moving on, in ranged matchups against AD top laners, we usually recommend that you buy Ninja Tabby very early on. The reason being that you can close the gap on your opponent more easily and take less damage while doing so, on top of also taking less damage as you run away from your opponent. Obviously, he only had 1000 gold when he based, so he bought a Phage instead. This isn't ideal, but you can replicate the Ninja Tabby effect with Phage if you're smart about its usage. Remember that on top of Phage's on-hit movement speed buff, it grants a huge burst of speed whenever you kill any unit. This burst of movement speed is actually higher than the movement speed tier 2 boots provide. This is very useful on champions that buy Phage with built-in AoE in their kits, such as Darius, Riven, or Aatrox. When going in for a trade, try to time your AoE abilities to not only hit your opponent, but a low health minion at the same time. This will help you to stick to your targets and potentially finish them off. Once Hector is back in lane with his item lead, he immediately forces a trade and finds a cheeky Q on Dilution. All the AoE damage that he dealt caused the casters to get low so he can E through them and get a burst of speed on his way out. This probably didn't matter in this specific situation, but it's an example of how using Phage effectively could look. Moments later, Hector times his all in as he's killing this melee creep. Lucian not respecting the engage is easily caught up to, and all these casters that were also killed in the process allows him to maintain the speed buff and chase Lucian down easily. And now, to put the nail in the coffin, Hector keeps pushing here with the help of the Demolish Room. After a bit, he chooses to use his health potion. This is as a precaution against Hecarim. He wants to proxy farm this wave before basing, and with the help of the potion, it's very unlikely he dies to a gank here. But the second he sees Hecarim in the river, near Dragon, his game plan can shift entirely. Now he no longer has to be afraid of staying here proxying between both towers. This will make it impossible for Lucian to ever get back to his tower at all. And if he does try to, well, he'll just die. We all already know how this game goes. He no longer needs to care about anything, and he can just solo carry this game without breaking too much of his sweat. By the way, we released some crazy guides over at Skillcap, which are exclusive only to our subscribers. We have over 700 guides covering everything you need to know to rapidly improve. We also send our challengers into ELO Hell every week to see how they climb out of the most extreme scenarios with the worst teammates imaginable, all wrapped up into courses that you can watch right away. Oh, and if you don't significantly improve while using Skillcap, you get a full refund. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today and escape ELO Hell. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching.